Hello and welcome to Slice of Ace. Uh, today uh, I have Sam with me. Would you like to introduce yourself, <laughs> Sam? <laughs> I am Sam, also known as Samantha Amy, and I'm an Arrow Ace, also known as a romantic asexual. Yes, and Sam has a, a channel where she does some stuff about asexuality and some stuff about Harry Potter sometimes and veganism. So if any of those things interest you, then go check her channel out. I will leave links in the description. So what we're going to do today is uh, I'm going to be asking Sam some questions that we came up with together and similarly on her channel we have a video of her asking me some questions. Cool. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, so uh, to start off, uh, how would you describe your asexuality or your sexuality? Well, as I said, I am a romantic asexual, which means I neither have interest in a romantic or sexual relationship. I'm happy with my mum, my sister, my dog, and a couple of friends. So have any doors opened for you uh, since discovering your asexuality? Yes, I think they definitely have. My first asexual video got quite a lot of views quite fast and it really built my YouTube community. I only had a few subscribers when I posted it. Also, when I joined Twitter, I feel like I felt more ingrained in the asexuality community. Avon are really nice and they talk to me a lot and they presented me with an opportunity recently to write an article for the Metro, so that's fun. What was your dating life like before discovering that you were asexual? All over the place. <laughs> like the opposite of yours. <laughs> so... I started my life playing a lot of Kiss Chase in primary school and then in secondary school I decided that I didn't like boys and I was gay so I got a girlfriend. We did stuff and because I thought that was normal to do stuff. She then read in my diary that I didn't like sex so that tailed off. Then I had a couple of boyfriends and I didn't enjoy sex with them either. So. Then I was like, let's just stop this madness. Yep. And I just googled the word asexuality and then I saw the light. Yeah, that's a good point. I think a lot of people are presented with this idea of either straight or gay. So if you don't like the opposite gender, then you automatically think you like the same gender. Yeah. Um, and that's a pro because of the problems of a lack of visibility of asexuality, which is what we're trying to fix. Yes, we're going to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you feel it's necessary to come out as asexual, and how do people generally react when you do come out as asexual to them? Um, I feel like I do sometimes. Like in work this week, my workmate asked me how my car was because I broke down last weekend and I was like oh it's fine 56 pounds later I'm back on the road and she was like oh wait till you get a boyfriend he can pay for everything for you and I was like actually a equality and um b no thank you I neither want boyfriend nor baby and she was like no you're gonna change your mind I promise you you're gonna change, you don't know who you are, you're gonna change your mind. And I'm like, no I'm not. So sometimes, on, on occasions like those, I feel like I need to tell people who I am. Other times, I just can tell when people are gonna flirt with me and just dodge it, you know? There's a lot of problems with that statement as well because um, not only are they being very matinomative, but it's quite sexist saying, yes. just get a boyfriend, he'll pay yes. for things for you. And she was like, oh, a girlfriend then. I was like, no, stop it. <laughs> Where do you stand on the debate regarding whether aces belong in the LGBT plus community? There we go. Well, I think that it's just a bit stupid that people decide to gatekeep. It's supposed to be essentially a community that stands for equality and I don't know who people think they are trying to tell 
other people that they're better than them because they enjoy the sex. But I basically think that if you feel like you belong in the LGBT plus community, so hard to say. Can we just come up with like a, a one syllable? The look of the two. <laughs> if you fit in there and you feel like you belong, you belong. You don't need anyone else's approval yeah. or validation. If you think you belong there and you've got friends there and you're happy identifying as Lugabata, then you are. Congrats. Yeah, I don't understand why, like a gay person who is who faces all the discrimination of being gay, because there still is problems with it. There's still homophobia. I don't get how someone like that can then say, no, you're not coming because you're not queer enough, or you don't face enough discrimination. It's like a competition. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you're not repressed enough to be here. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous, especially because. I'm pretty sure races are oppressed enough. Yes. Just saying. Yeah. Like, I went to Pride last year as an asexual and I didn't feel out of place. Yeah. Like, I wasn't there for the sexual attractions or the romantic attractions. I was there to wear my flag around my shoulder and watch the drag queens. And I didn't feel pushed out. But I guess there are some people who dog me up from behind. I don't know, maybe that yeah. happened. I really liked seeing the, the, like, the ace bit. There was like a tiny ace bit yeah. in the parade. So, yes. Uh, what uh, ace networks are you a part of? I think my favourite ace network I'm part of is UK Asexuality on Facebook. It's a closed group, I believe. So you have to ask to join. Ask Sam. Yeah, ask me. I'll invite you in. <laughs> we won't push you out. But yeah, um, people just like post daily thoughts or pictures of cats or whatever on there. Cats. Yes. <laughs> and it doesn't even have to be ace related. You just have to be ace and then you're allowed in and we can enjoy things about you and things we have in common. And it's just a place to make friends. Yeah, I think like even if you're not talking about asexuality, it's nice to have a group of people who share that experience, that orientation. Yeah. So you can just socialise with them and you kind of already have something in common. Yeah. It's like going to a board game club and everyone likes board games, but yes. instead going to an ace club and everyone's ace. There's a lot of support on there as well, like people often post their problems and their woes and we're all there to comment and support each other. There's one thing I would say, um, that the ace community is really supportive and accepting. Definitely. And some of the, like, the ace communities on the internet are like the safest, nicest places on the internet I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. So have you met any aces in person? Presumably not including me. <laughs> well, I have a friend who is coming to terms with the fact that said friend may be demisexual. Mm. So technically, maybe? Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're somewhere on the ace spectrum. Like, since I met them, I was kind of like, hmm, are you? Like, yeah, but it's not something I want to ask. No. <laughs> like, because, because it could just be that they're, they're being private about yeah. their sexual interests. Because, like, not everyone you see would necessarily be explicitly sexual. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I understand what you mean, like, your ace star going off. You, like, you think that they may be yeah. asexual. But said friend has thrown the term demisexual at me, drunk on the phone, so <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> Probably. Uh, it's not, not a term you just come Throw across. <laughs> Do you feel pressured to have a relationship um, despite your aromanticism? Uh, I do. Like, there's this guy that comes into my work and I'm friends with him on Facebook and I've got like a sneaking suspicion that he might like me and part of, like the past part of me that wanted to be normal uh, kind of keeps whispering in my ear like he's nice, he's good looking, um, he's not a murderer and we, we already know his family because it's quite 
there's a lot of customers that come in that are related and they're all regulars so I was like it would be the perfect solution but it's like it, it shouldn't be a solution because it's not a problem you know it just would make it would shut other people up mm. and that's what I want I don't like attention yeah. I don't like people asking me if I'm courting, so I have considered it, but I know that realistically it's not something that's going to happen. Yeah, it's, there is unfortunately a lot of societal pressure to um, conform. Yeah, conform and adhere to that standard of being in a monogamous romantic relationship. Um, and it, it would be easier if you, like, it would be easier not to be asexual. Yeah, like, that's definitely. not. It's unfortunate, but it would be easier not to be asexual. So, um, yeah, it's understandable to, to feel that pressure. But you have to remember that it's like, in the at the end of the day, you'd be happier, single, you'd be yeah. happier uh, without that relationship, and it doesn't really matter what anyone else thinks. Is your romantic or your sexual orientation more important to you, or are they about the same, or are they indistinguishable? I feel like, for me, they kind of go hand in hand, yeah. because I'm just abstaining from both things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not something that I come out as, so if, say, someone said, wait until you get a boyfriend, I wouldn't say, I neither want sex nor a relationship, I'll just say, I'm not getting a boyfriend, thank you. Uh, it's not really something I go into, so they're kind of equally as important to me because they're the same thing. Yeah, I think like distinguishing between romantic and sexual orientation is obviously something that's only really done in the asexual community, and that's because a lot of people, a lot of romantic people, people like me, people who want want a relationship but don't want the, the sex, um, yeah. need that distinction to explain it simply. Um, but yeah, it, may, it makes sense that you can just kind of meld them together if they're matching. Like, yeah. So it's normally when someone is gay, they're just homo romantic, homo sexual. But they don't say that; they're just gay or homosexual. So, Easier yeah. that way. <laughs> Which is we overcomplicate things we because do. We need, otherwise, how am I going to explain about saying so? I'm gay, but I don't really want to have sex with you <laughs> because I don't feel sexual attraction. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so it's easier just to say gay ace. Yeah, until people know what asexuality is and how many labels there are inside it, then we're just gonna shorten it as best we can. <laughs> yeah. An ultimate question. Um, do sex scenes and hypersexualization in popular media bother you at all? Not so much. Like, I was watching The Fault in Our Stars last night, which is a film I love. And I was just, they were about to have sex and I was just feeling their love for each other. I, I didn't, like, I kind of separate it, I think. Like, I really ship people and I want them to be together, but I'm yeah. like, when it comes to me, it's no. So, alternatively, like, on Riverdale this week, uh, people started having sex and it just went on for way too long. There was lots of boobs and clothes coming off and I'm like yeah yeah do it and then like too much happened and I was like okay cut we've had enough and then it just it went on for about five minutes and I was like yeah. okay just take the top off and then cut that's fine yeah I agree totally um I did Netflix shows often have a lot of like explicit yeah. sex scenes in them and when I was at uni I used to do the dishes when they're having sex. <laughs> There's like sex scene starts, okay, I'm doing dishes. And then like, it, you can do the dishes for about 10 minutes and you get back and they've just done it. And yeah, and like... you're like, good, there we go. <laughs> that bit never happened. <laughs> uh, no important story bits going on there, so it's fine. No. Um, cool. So I think that was all the main questions. Um, the only other thing was that my general slice of ace question that I always ask which is, what is your favourite type of cake? Well, I've, I've given this some thought already. <laughs> I've, I've prepared her for this question. I don't normally prepare people. So if I'm making it myself, it's the Betty Crocker coffee cake mix with the coffee frosting on top. Okay. Because like, I've just gone 
from growing up hating coffee to a coffee addict like that. But also Belgian buns from Greg's. Belgian buns? What are those? Like is those that... are the round ones with the icing and the cherry and the. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, like the the pastry. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's their only vegan cake. Okay. Yeah, but they're really good. That's they have like icing about that thick. Icing really good. Yes. You just like more icing yeah. on the pan. That's fine. And then I sh shamelessly lick the packaging because the icing stuck to it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I do exactly the same thing. You can't waste it. No. It's just, it'd just be a waste. It would. Cool. So, I think that is all we had to talk about, or we were going to talk about. Thank you for being here. No problem. Thank and yes, uh, we also did a video, like I said earlier, on Sam's channel. I'll leave the link to that in the description below. And I'll also leave a link to all of Sam's things. So, Socials. Yes, so subscribe to her channel and her, follow her on the Twitter thing and any other links that you want. <laughs> I think to. that's it. Those are, the, those, are the, YouTube. those are the links in the description. Thank you. Down there. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like. I post videos every Saturday, so if you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. That is all I have to say today. Have a wonderful day, and I shall see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Playing a lot of Kiss Chase in primary school. Excuse me! Sorry, I am. Um, I, I got a message. Doesn't look like we're here to cut hair. <laughs> we don't know a thing about cutting hair. Someone Stop else just dying. Yes. Oh, she's been to Greg's. <laughs>